I'm Travis. I'm Emily. We have a five-year-old son named Gideon. We live in Kansas City, Missouri. We love downtown Kansas City. I mean, we're down here every week. Um, a lot of times, multiple times a week. Um, it's just the place to be. While Emily and I were dating, I was still watching porn, and it was still a big part of my life, but I kept it hidden from her. And I would stay up until two, three, four in the morning, really until I just was so exhausted that I couldn't stay awake anymore, just downloading and consuming porn. There were so many moments that I could have been helping us experience the joys of a family that, you know, she kind of felt like a single mom, I think, for a lot of years because I was more focused on my porn than I was her and our son. I got to the point where just viewing porn really wasn't enough for me. And so I, I, I wanted, you know, kind of real life porn. And so I really began to seek out, you know, different women in internet chat rooms, dating sites, and try to see if I can get them to send me anything that they'd be willing to. You know, porn really just consumed me so much that, you know, I was seeking out other women, other relationships, having, you know, physical affairs, emotional affairs with multiple other women. And one of the other women that I'd been having an ongoing affair with for a long time um, kind of reached out to Emily via Facebook. And she's just like, uh, your husband's living a double life. He has another Facebook account and all these different things. And I just felt like completely lost. The evening after Emily had received those messages, we went out on a walk. My first question was, what do you want? And he said, I don't know. And hearing that answer, like hearing from your husband, you know, I don't know what I want, it's just heartbreaking. Like, oh, so my husband doesn't even know if he wants to be married to me. The years leading up to that, those were very traumatic years for me. I mean, betrayal trauma, that's something that spouses go through when they've been married to someone who betrays them and then it's like betrayal after betrayal after betrayal and you kind of develop this PTSD from it. I turned into a shell and I had, you know, built up this wall to protect myself so I wouldn't get hurt anymore and so things that would happen, you know, I just start blocking them out. While she was mad, it was more like she was looking at me as someone who needed help. And she was deeply hurt. You know, I remember her looking at me multiple times and, and saying, you know, you can get past this, we can get help. She's like, I'm not leaving you. I wanna help you fight this. And, uh, you know, it was just, at that point, I didn't want the marriage to end. At that point, I, I hated the porn and I was so frustrated at myself, and I was just sick of it. But it wasn't until the next week, two weeks, that I really began to believe that I can change. So when I was viewing all that porn, I couldn't see true beauty when it was in front of me. So here I have this absolutely incredibly beautiful wife, and yet, you know, I wouldn't notice her, and I was numb to it all. And about six to eight months without watching porn, I began to notice the true beauty of her inside and out. I mean, her decision to stick with me and to believe in me when I was at my worst ultimately changed my life. Just because you're on recovery journey doesn't mean everything's perfect. It's far from perfect. We still have arguments, we still get frustrated with each other. We still have rough days. It's not about perfection necessarily, but it's about a real life relationships and valuing them more than images on a screen because those can't bring happiness. Whereas a relationship with a real person and real love, that brings joy. <laughs>